You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Well, today, under the theme of open heavens, I'm going to look at the mystery of praise as a spiritual weapon. And I'm going to speak shortly on what I call sing praises with understanding. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 47 and we shall read two verses 6 and 7. Psalm 47 verses 6 and 7. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. Verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Isn't it interesting how many times the phrase sing praises appear? Let's all read it together. Six and seven again. One to go. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Four things come out here. Four important statements. Number one, sing praises. The first thing for you to understand is that praises must be sung. Isn't it? How many of you don't like singing? You see, you can't be spiritual beyond singing. Have you noticed that Christianity is about the only faith that sings a lot? You can't be more religious than singing. If you don't like singing, you will not be able to grow your faith well. Praises must be sung. You've got to learn it. You've got to love it. It's a sign of spiritual growth to be singing. And it takes a change of heart to love worship. The second thing it says, sing praises to God. To who? So the second thing for you to know, our praises must be to God. It is not for the world. It is not for yourself. It is not for the church. It is to who? To God. So when you sing praises, who are you singing to? It means that there must be a consciousness that I am singing to God. You don't just sing. There must be a consciousness that what we are doing is to God. And that is why usually you find out that sometimes people close their eyes or they lift up their eyes and look to heaven because you want that consciousness to be that you are singing to God. And if you are going to be an effective minister in song, one of the things is a consciousness every time you are ministering or singing that you are singing to God. Ah, God, you see, I'm not singing to you. When it's praises time, we're not singing to one another. We are singing to God. So be careful not to allow another person to distract you from singing to God. Sometimes your friend can be enjoying the music so much that he or she taps you and then you are singing and dancing together. But remember that you are singing to God. You see, there can be distractions to our singing praises to God. One another. Or the environment. Or the drums. Or the instrumentalists. But remember, we are singing praises to God. The third thing is that it says, For God is the king of all the earth. Our praises is to a king of all the earth. What does it mean? We are singing to someone who is a great person and we put in our best efforts with a spirit of excellence. Depending on who you are appearing before, I'm sure if you are told as an instrumentalist or as an, an artist that you are going to perform before maybe 
dignitaries. How will your preparation be like? I'm sure you put in more effort. You'll put in more rehearsals. You want to give off your very best sound, isn't it? So the Bible is saying that you are not singing praises to an ordinary person. You are singing praises to a king of all the earth. So again, you must do it with your best effort. You must do it with a spirit of excellence. So when we talk about praises, it is something we do. We sing it. We sing it to God with a consciousness. And we do it with our best effort. So the instrumentalist make sure you get your best the sound make sure you get your best everybody with your voice you sing with your best tune otherwise you see it won't please god this is god who is giving us instructions and saying sing praises to god sing praises unto our king sing praises for god is the king of all the earth there are great people in the earth but there is a king that is greater than all of them and so when it comes to praises time what we do must be with the best of effort and with the spirit of excellence and then finally we sing praises with understanding we are not just participating as a ritual we are doing it with understanding and it is more than making you feel good there is an understanding about what you are doing that number one you are singing praises number two you are singing praises to God and number three you are consciously putting in your best effort and you are doing it with understanding not because somebody has told you to do it so let's take a song like Jesus you love me too much oh. Okay, let's practice it Number one, what are we going to do? We are going to sing You know, there are people when they come to church, they don't sing But the Bible says that sing it And when it comes to praises, sing praises Our God reigns You see, you don't have an excuse to say I'm playing instruments, I'm an usher I'm sitting behind media or whatever it is Everybody says sing it You don't have an excuse to say I have a bad voice He knows you have a bad voice but he says sing our God reign, our God reign. We are giving him praises, but he says we should sing it. Instead of just saying it, sing it. Don't chant it, sing it. So you find out that once we start doing that, immediately there's a consciousness that there's God. It will change the way you behave. Because when you realize that you are singing before a great king, you want to give of your best. And we do it with understanding. We are singing praises with understanding, knowing that it is to God. So, it is important for you to understand these four foundational things about praises. It is not to a man. It is not to ourselves. We do it with a spirit of excellence because we are doing it to a great king over all the earth. And we'll sing it. We won't harm it. We'll sing. Look at Psalm 69, verse 30. Psalm 69, verse 30. What does it say? I will praise the name of God with a song. With a what? How are you going to praise the name of God? With a song. So, do you have a song? When we say it's praise time, you must have a song. How do you praise God? With a song. So, when we come to church and we say it's praise time, listen, it's not a joke. It's not just an activity we are trying to get over with. We are doing praises to the name of God with a song. And we magnify his name with thanksgiving. And that is why we are going to explore the mystery of singing praises with understanding to God, our King. Singing praises is a command and not an emotional gesture. Neither is it a vote or an opinion, whether you like it or not. Every time you come to church, we will sing and we'll sing praises unto God and we'll praise Him. I pray that today God will give us understanding of singing praises in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is praise? Let me first differentiate between praise and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is appreciating God for what he has done. Listen carefully. There are many people who lead praise and worship. And there are many people who don't even know what is praises and what is thanksgiving. And what is worship. For many people, when we say worship, then it's like the slow song. And so they think that the more they drag the song, then they are worshiping. No. No. Worship is an umbrella. Okay under which you have praises, thanksgiving. Worship is a whole lifestyle. Praise is an activity under worship. Did you hear me? So it is not the tempo of the song that decides that it is praise or worship or thanksgiving. Everything we do, God wants all of us to worship him at every time, okay? Praises is an activity within our worship, okay? So it is not the tempo of the song. Even though 
praises will usually go with dancing, clapping, noise making. So it usually tends to be faster and more aggressive. But it is more than just the tempo of the song. So when we talk about praises, praise is an expression of celebrating God. It can be verbal or non-verbal. When I say something good about you, you can say, oh, Pastor Bernard is praising me. What am I doing? I'm saying good things about you or about things you have done. If I say, for example, you're a good footballer. If I say you're a hard worker, it's a praise. It's a narration verbally or non-verbally showing something you have done and approving you. So when we say let us praise God, we are going to be singing songs or we are going to be expressing ourselves in celebrating God. And that is why usually praise will come with dancing because it's an expression of celebration. And celebration will come with music. Celebration will come with dancing. Celebration will come with some noise making. So it is not the noise that makes it. It is the praise that expresses itself in those things. Because you can make noise and not be celebrating God. Remember I've told you, we are singing it. We are singing it to a great king. We are singing it with understanding. Those are the elements and the foundations. So now we understand that it's an expression, verbal or otherwise, celebrating God for who he is and what he has done. Number two, praise narrates the greatness of God with excitement and awe, usually through a song. So when we talk about praise, we are going to talk about the greatness of God, his great works. Or we are going to recount what God has done for other people that we've read about or our personal experiences. So you can say, God is good. God has healed me. God is a very present help in time of trouble. What are you doing? You are narrating the greatness of God, his great works. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. God is omnipotent. God is immortal. He's invincible. God is the one who raises the dead. He parts the Red Seas. He fights for us. What are you doing? You are narrating the greatness of God and the things he has done, either you have read about or you have experienced. If you read Psalm 92, verse 1, look at what Psalm 92, verse 1 to verse 4 or 5 says. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So you find out that most of the time you find praises, what are you supposed to do? Sing. How many of you love singing? If you are a child of God, you have to love it. You see, it's a command. It's not a suggestion. So every child of God, one of the factors that will mark you is that you will sing. So it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Verse 2. What do we sing praises to do? To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. So in singing praises, what we are actually doing is that we are showing forth we are manifesting. We are talking about the greatness of the Lord, his loving kindness in the morning, and the faithfulness of God at night. So we are talking about God is a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a great I am. He loves us. You see, that's what, Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. What are you doing? You are singing praises. Ye ye na ye won ye you see, these are expressions narrating the greatness of God. And it says, verse 3 shows us how we do it. So we sing it but, and we speak about his greatness. But in verse 3, it says, upon an instrument of 10 strings. So we do it with instruments. And upon the psaltery and upon the harp with a solemn sound. Wow. So instrumentalists, you begin to understand your part in praises. In aiding praises. Remember, the foundation is to sing praises with understanding. But these are aids. The instruments come to help us to be able to give to God and talk about his greatness, his faithfulness, and his loving kindness. So when you start talking, God, you love us so much. Father, you are good. You love me so much. You sent your only begotten son to die. What are you doing? You are narrating either through a personal experience or something that you have learned about God's goodness and his faithfulness. Look at verse 4. For thou, Lord, now look at the personal testimony. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. You've had an experience that has made you glad through the work of the Lord. God, you've been good to me. Excellent is thy name. 
Oh, excellent is thy power. What are you doing? You are talking of something you have seen. It says, you have made me glad through thy work, and I will triumph in the works of thy hands. That's a personal experience encounter for which you are narrating. Number three, what is praise? Praise is protocol for accessing and invoking the presence of God. Psalm 100, verse 1 to 4. Praise is a protocol for accessing and invoking the presence of God. So why do we praise? Because it's part of his protocol. You cannot come before God without praise. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Wow. And we are the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with into his courts with what is God's requirement for you to enter into his courts? Praise. So listen, you can come to church and never access the presence of God because the protocol hasn't been fulfilled. It's just like you are going to see a big man and then one of the requirements is that you must fill a form and state your purpose. And then you fill the form but you don't state your purpose. The receptionist tells you wait. You may have entered the building but you haven't accessed the presence of the person. Praises takes you into the courts. So I want to ask all of you, how many of you have ever entered into the courts of the Lord? Because sometimes, praises time, there are people who are now working in, oh, me feel, oh, they are doing praise. As for me, I'm waiting for the word. And you may come to church, but you find out that you never enter into the courts. And many people have been taking praise and thanksgiving as a deliberate protocol. The first part of our prayer always has to do with praise and thanksgiving. And I know, I don't want, I want the binding, I want the losing. You see, you don't understand that you can't just barge into a great man's house and say, give me food, give me husband. That's being rude. The protocols are that you first greet. The protocols are first that you ask how the person is doing. The protocols are that seek ye first the kingdom of God. So, Father, thank you for your kingdom. You are a great God. There's none that can be compared to you. It's called appellations. But you come in front and wait, hey, la, blah, blah, hey, la, blah, hey, hey, hey. You see, that's... That's very unscripturally sound. <laughs> Not every prayer is, hey, hey. I mean, I don't see how you are saying thank you. You are giving somebody fans or appellations. And your voice is, hey, 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 hey. I mean, who wants to stand before a madman? Who wants that madman coming into his presence with shouting? There's a time to shout. There's a time to be solemn. Praise and worship, you can see that. Some people, even the way they are praising and worship, you can see that this is not praise and worship. Right from prison, you're shouting at God. Excuse me, excuse me. Lift up your hands and just worship the Lord. You see, there's a time to be, <laughs> forgive me for want of it, to be in love and to be romantic and to honor Him. There's a time to kneel before Him. That's worship. But sometimes, if I say, let's worship God, no, you will hear some voices as if God, oh. enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless his name. Someone who enter into the presence of the great king. When I see a great man, the first thing I do is, I bow. I bow. Say, can I be of help to you? May you live long. In fact, when you listen to the, the British, one of their refrains is, long live the queen. The first thing, long live the queen. How many of you will approach God and say, O manche yilile abba. O bele hiachi. Hallowed be thy name. That's what the Lord's prayer. That's what God taught us. Father, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed. No. That, that cannot be praise. Yehovah, 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 Bubu Nawo. You see, immediately there's a consciousness of God. Your voice, your attitude, your demeanor, a lot will change. And it's not for show. And it's not for people to see that you have you are a pastor. Oh, this one, it is to God. And everybody who comes before God, you will mellow. As I saw, I said, when I saw him, I fell down as somebody was dead. The glory about him. You see, if we are able to access the presence of God, listen, something will change. That's why he says, nobody comes before me and goes back the same. The praise and worship we do on a Sunday is not just an activity because we want to while away the time. It is meant to give us the protocols for accessing his presence. It may be used as an activity of worship during a service, but it can never and must never be trivialized. So I'll dare say, that any serious Christian will never miss out praise and worship. Never. You will never come late 
and miss prison worship. Now, these are things you learn. Because if you don't learn them, you'll be knocking on a door that is closed. And heaven will be closed over your life. But as I'm going to show you, heaven must open. Number four, God dwells in the praises of his people. Psalm 22 verse 3. When we praise him, God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22 verse 3, what does it say? One, two, go. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. What does God do? He inhabits the praises of Israel. So when we lift up our voices and we begin to sing praises with understanding to a great king, what does God do? God lives where he is to come and dwell in our praise. Ah, 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 ah. Understand that. Do it with understanding. That when you are singing, when you are lifting up your hands, when you are talking about the greatness of God, something is about to happen. What is happening? God is moving down. When praises goes up, the presence of God comes down. You see why you do it with understanding? Because you know what you are building. I'm building a habitation for the Lord. I'm building something for God to come and stay in. Instrumentalists, when you begin to play, remember. Singers, when you begin to sing. Church, when we begin to lift up praise, remember. It is not just a tune. It is not just something we are dancing. We are creating a habitation. I hear people say, oh, pastor, me, I'm an introvert. Well, you can decide to call yourself what you are. All I know is I'm a child of God. I'm born of his spirit. That's all I know. As for me, I can't express myself. Shame on you. You can shout at the stadium. You can dance at a funeral. You can fight on the streets. Yet, you come to church, I'm an introvert. So, that person has no excuse. Because what we are doing is we are building a habitation. Now listen carefully, because I'm going to show you something, and I'm going to make a statement for you. God dwells, so God comes down to stay in your praises, isn't it? What it means is that the greater one is now with you, and with the one who praises. Wow, you are as strong as your praises, because when you praise, God comes down into your life. So if you don't praise, he doesn't come down. He's still your God, but he doesn't come down. So what he says, God is as strong as your praise. If your praises are weak, you weaken your own defense system. Have you seen a football team that has a weak defense? They may be good, but they'll be scored. Why? Not because they're not a good ball team. Their defense is weak. Don't weaken your defense. Let the greater one stay with you. Bring him down. God is in heaven, but he wants to come down and show himself on our behalf. Be with you in the school. His name is Emmanuel. He wants to go with you everywhere you go. He wants people to see that the greater one is with you. How? Your praises. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of his people. Number five, the fifth thing about praises. Praise is an instruction to the earth. Hmm. So every time we praise, there's an instruction we are giving to the earth to yield forth her increase. Psalm 67 verse 5. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results. But those results will only come when the people praise God. Let's all read Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Does it include you? Does it include the women? Does it include the children? Does it include the instrumentalists? Does it include the projection team? Does it include the fathers? Mothers? Pregnant women? Doctors? Lawyers? Teachers? How many people? So when you come and see only a group and some people are standing, there's something wrong because they don't understand. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. What will happen? Then. What is then? Then is as a result of what the people do in verse 5. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Lift up your hand and say, my earth shall yield increase. So if you find someone whose earth is not yielding increase, then you find out that there is a condition that hasn't been fulfilled. Because your earth must yield increase. There are things that are in your earth. When something is in the earth, it means that it's been buried, isn't it? When something is buried, you don't see it physically out, but it's there. It's like pregnancy. When you are pregnant, nobody sees the baby outside, but it's inside your earth. There are dreams inside your earth. There are visions you carry inside your earth. But the Bible says that then shall the earth yield her increase. So there are dreams that are buried inside you that are not coming out. There are children that are buried inside you that are not coming out. There's a future that is inside of you because something that you must do to cause that thing to come out, the pregnancy to bring out the baby. When a woman is pregnant, whether she likes it or not, when she goes to the hospital, she's advised to push. You see, praise and worship is like a push. You like, you don't like, you must push. You see, there are some things that you can't avoid. 
Praise and worship is not an option. There are some things that are not an option. If you decide not to push, you may carry a baby, the baby could die. I observe a lot of things. One of the things I've seen in many churches around the world where there's a lot of miracles and a lot of breakthroughs is vibrant praise and worship. Just look all over the world where people are entering to breakthroughs and getting contracts, where people are getting married, where things are happening in the lives of people. Why? Praise and worship. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase. And he says, and God, even our own God shall bless us. And God, oh, our own God, he will look at praise and worship and say, I'll bless them. Look at verse 7. And he says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Lift up your hand and say, Father, bless me. How is it going to start? How is all this going to happen? Praise. Let all the people praise him. Then shall the earth yield forth an increase. Number six. The sixth thing you should learn about praise is that praise is a mystery. It's an instrument of faith. You see, it is not something you can explain. <laughs> okay? But it works. That's a mystery. Praise is an instrument of faith in God. Psalm 56, verse 4 and verse 10. When we praise God, we're actually saying that we believe in God and his word. We believe that the word of God is infallible. We believe that once God has said it, it shall come to pass, and I rest in the Lord. So when you find a people who praise God, they are actually affirming their faith in God and his word. Psalm 56 verse 4, let's all read it together. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. So all of a sudden, God's word has come. And the man says, because of what God has said, there may be people against me. I will not fear. I don't care now because I believe the word of God against what people are doing, against what people are saying, against what is contrary evidence on the outside. A lot of things may be happening on the outside, but I put my trust in the word. And because of that, I will praise his word. I will praise his word. God has said, I am a healer. Thank God. I praise you. Your word is settled. Your word is true. I praise the word. You see, all those things are God's word. We will praise his word. And will not fear what flesh can do. Look at verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord I will praise his word. Let people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield her increase. Who would have thought Sarah will give suck to a child. And that will make her laugh in her old age. And Sarah will say that all who hear that the Lord has given me a child will laugh with me. Abraham praised his way into fulfillment of prophecy. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith giving glory to God. Your prophetic Isaac must manifest in praise. That job that you are looking for, it will manifest when you begin to praise. Praise will never lose a battle. You can praise your way out of every valley into a high place of life. And I prophesy to you that you are coming out of that pit in grand style. And a new chapter will open unto you this season. We'll continue next week. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hello precious one, we wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15am for the morning glory service, at 7.30am for the second service which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms and at 9.45am for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Manor, our weekday Bible teaching service which comes off every Tuesday at 6pm and Thursday at 6.30pm in person and online respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6pm to pray and seek his face for divine encounters. The king has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Me Bernard Adiapa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.